In this lecture, we are going to compare the definition of different test levels. Let's first see the definition of component testing. Here, testing is performed on each individual component separately without integrating with other components. So, when we conduct component testing, we focus on the individual module and it's not connected with any other parts of the software. Now, let's use an example to understand this definition. Let's say this is the requirement given by the customer. If the speed of the motor is more than 150 km per hour and the temperature value is greater than 120 degrees, then switch off the motor. They want to switch the motor off if the speed is higher than 150 km per hour and if the temperature is greater than 120 degrees. For this requirement, the developer writes the following code which he divides into three functions. In the first function, he checks the speed of the motor. In the second one, he checks the value of the temperature. And in the third one, he controls the motor. Should it stop or keep running? If we were to perform component testing on this code, we would have to separate each component. We can divide this program into three components. Component A, where we only test the motor speed. Component B, where we only test the temperature value. And component C, where we test the motor movement. As you can see, there are three components in this code that need to be independently tested. Under component testing, there is no relationship between component A and B, component A and C, or component B and C. They are all just individual units here. When we perform testing on each of these modules individually, it's called component testing. Let's see the definition of integration testing. The definition of integration testing is as follows. When individual software modules are integrated logically and tested as a group, what this means is we have individual components. First, we group them. Then, we perform testing on them. To understand this concept better, let's use an example. Let's continue with the same example which we used previously. If the speed of the motor is more than 150 km per hour and the temperature value is greater than 120 degrees, then switch the motor off. Let's say the developer has written this code for the requirement and we want to perform integration testing on it. We already know that to perform component testing, we have to take each of these functions and test them separately. For integration testing, we have to take a minimum of two components. We can perform integration testing on component A and B. What we are checking here is if the value of speed in A is rising, is the value of temperature in B also rising? This shows us the interaction between the two modules. We can also perform integration tests on components C and B. Just remember that you have to take a minimum of two units to perform integration tests. In this example, at maximum, you can test all three components together too. This is the basic concept of integration testing. Let's take a look at the levels of integration testing. As per the ISTQB Foundation Level Syllabus, we have two integration testing levels. The first level is Component Integration Testing, and the second level is System Integration Testing. Let's see the difference between Component Integration Testing and System Integration Testing. Here, we will only cover the basic difference between them. The first difference is based on the focus of the testing level. The component integration testing focuses on interactions and interfaces between integrated components. 
So in component integration testing, we check interactions between two components. But when you are in system integration testing, you check interactions and interfaces between systems, packages, and microservices. If there are multiple systems, then we check the interaction between those systems. Let's see the system testing definition. System testing is the testing of a complete and fully integrated software product. The key phrase here is complete and fully integrated. This means that the integration testing has been done and all components are fully integrated. Let's use an example to illustrate this concept. Again, we will use the same example to maintain the continuity. We are already familiar with this requirement from previous examples. But now, let's see how a system testing is carried out on it. We know that there are three components in the code, but when we are performing system testing, we don't care about the components. We only care about the complete system. What we need is to find the values that are important to the system. Here, there are two important values, the value of the speed and the value of the temperature. Let's see why. We give two values to the system, 151 as speed, which is greater than 150 kilometers per hour, and 121 as the temperature value, which is also greater than 120 degrees. If the system is working previously, then as soon as the motor reaches these values, it should stop. So this is how a system testing is carried out. We don't care about how the code is written. What we do care about is, if we give a set of inputs, then what will be the output? We deal with input and output under system testing. This is all about system testing. Now we will see the definition of acceptance testing. Acceptance testing is performed when the complete system has been implemented. Once the system is ready, we test to see if we can accept its performance. This is the official definition. Formal testing with respect to user needs requirements, and business processes conducted to determine whether or not a system satisfies the acceptance criteria. There are certain acceptance criteria in place. Once the system is ready, we carry out acceptance testing to check if it is fulfilling those criteria. If yes, then the customer will accept the product. And to enable the user, customer or other authorized entity to determine whether or not to accept the system. The whole point of acceptance testing is to meet the user's needs and check if the system is acceptable or not. There are different types of acceptance testing. In this course, we will learn about four types. The first is user acceptance testing. The second is operational acceptance testing. The third is contractual and regulatory acceptance testing. And fourth is alpha and beta testing. We will cover them in the upcoming lecture. We will see now test level hierarchy as per the ISTQB foundation level syllabus. First, we do component testing. After component testing, we do component integration testing. Next is system integration testing. After this, we do system testing. And finally, at the end, we perform acceptance testing. Please remember them in the same order as mentioned here. Now let's summarize all the definitions which we covered until now. First is component testing. Here, testing is performed on each individual component separately without integrating with other components. Second is integration testing. Here, individual software modules are integrated logically and tested as a group. Next is system testing. System testing is the testing of a complete and fully integrated software product. Last 
is acceptance testing. Formal testing with respect to user needs, requirements, and business processes conducted to determine whether or not a system satisfies the acceptance criteria and to enable the user, customers, or other authorized entity to determine whether or not to accept the system. That's it from this lecture. Thank you.